Hi, my name is Ken Guffey Miller, USC Baseball Alumni Association, bringing you a glimpse of USC baseball history. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the 1955 team. We brought a uh, ace pitcher off the 55 team who was very significant in the, uh, the, uh, the season as well as the tour afterwards. The team is really known for the, the tour that it took to Far East, and that included both Japan, South Korea, and Hawaii. And Vic, I just wanted to ask you a few questions about the uh, tournament, or not the tournament, but the tour. Can you tell us a little bit about how it was, and what was the main, what was the purpose of it, primarily? Well, the purpose was putting USC baseball on the international map. Um, Rod put this together with the uh, government, and it was very important for us to have a very good showing over there. Um, we played Japanese colleges, we played service all-star teams, and we started out in Tokyo. Uh, from there we went to Korea. Then from there we went to Okinawa. And then uh, back to Tokyo, and then we finished up in Hawaii. How many games did you play over there? We played 27 games in 30 days. We won 24 and lost three. Uh, the month of August um, was very hot. We left LAX. We traveled to uh, Travis Air Force Base. From there we went to Guam, and from Guam we wound up in Tokyo. We stayed at the Daiichi Hotel in Tokyo, which was MacArthur's headquarters after the war. What was it like over there? Was the temperature about what it was over here? How did how how did everybody do? In I pitched there? the first game at Tachikawa Air Force Base. It was a hundred degree heat with a hundred degree humidity. We were not used to that. Just to, I'll jump a little bit because I went over there. My pitching weight was two hundred and six pounds. I came home in one hundred and eighty nine pounds. The month of August was terrible. The heat in Korea. Um, we really didn't know much about the history because we played in Okinawa, which had a significant history in World War II. Of course, we played in Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo. Um, it was a trip to remember. It was a fantastic trip. Most um, road trips are three days. That's what we generally end up with here in the States. But what kind of preparation did Rod have for you guys, or what kind of warning did he give you about being away all those days? Did he give any special instructions about uh, behavior or anything like that? or did he just? No, he really didn't. Um, we had a great bunch of guys. Um, th to give you an idea of the quality of the guys that were on the team, there was a great pearl merchant named Mickey Moto, and he came in the Daiichi Hotel in a big room, and he dumped all his pearls on a table, and he trusted us to pick out what we wanted and pay for it. Not one thing was taken without being paid for it. We just had a, a bunch of real good guys. How, how was the travel going over there? How, what did you? What kind of a plane was it? You <laughs> it was a propeller-driven plane. And um, it's funny you ask me that, Ken, because at 12 midnight, I'm looking out the window, and there's oil coming out of the engine, and I'm going, wait a minute, it's spraying the window, and I'll never forget the stewardess coming over to me and saying, would you like to have something to eat? And I said, sure, we're serving roast beef. Great. And she brought me the roast beef, and it was congealed in fat. And I said, you know what, I don't think I want this roast beef. So, and then we landed in Guam, where we had breakfast, and then Tokyo. Um, it was great. We had, we, we ate well. Okinawa was fabulous. Uh, the officers club in Okinawa, the food was terrific. It was just, it was just a trip that's once in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And um, my personal, I was with, uh, after the College World Series, the, the Pirates flew me to Pittsburgh and old man Ricky himself watched me work out and he offered me a contract and I turned it down because Honestly, I owed it to Rod Dato because he gave me a scholarship and I felt, and he said he needed me on this trip and that's the reason I didn't sign. I signed, after the trip, I signed with the Cleveland Indians. That, that was great and I think uh, Rod and the team was quite happy. What was your record over there? 
I was 9-0 and on that trip. Uh, I finished up the season unofficially 27-3. and um, In those days, they didn't count the games against the pro teams. The NC2A didn't count the games against the all-star teams. All they counted in was league, and, um, and that was it. And, and I was undefeated in league, but that's not the point. It's not about me. This trip, Rod said that we put this trip on the international map. And one of the funniest stories is that a USC football game, Rod Dato introduced me to Casey Stengel. And he said, Casey, this kid was 9-0 and on our trip to Japan, and he just signed with the Cleveland Indians. And Casey looked at me in his gravelly voice. He said, kid, maybe you should have stayed in Japan. I'll never forget that. We had a lot of fun. How many people were on the trip? Do you recall how many people were on your team? Um, we had between 18 and 20 guys, and um, two of the guys on the trip, Ken Hadley, uh, later signed with the Detroit, played with Detroit and the Yankees. Buddy Pritchard played with the Pirates. Um, I signed uh, with Cleveland. Um, John Stevenson and John Garton both became pilots. John became a pilot for American Airlines, and... Uh, uh, John Garton flew jets in the Korean War and then came to work for Rod at Dart, where he worked until his demise years later. He passed on at a young age. But all the guys, you know, Tony Santino became a television executive. Um, Carl Maggio was here. Maggio um, went to work for Catalina Sportswear and, and also, I mean, it... it, it was uh, Blewett on that team? Yes, Mike Blewett. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, being a senior, <laughs> Tommy Sholin, who became an executive, uh, he has a big construction company in Newport Beach. I can't think of all, Jimmy Orris, our second baseman. I mean, Billy Fattis became a golf pro. Um, Bill Olson moved up to Oregon. Um, um, it's it just, that's part of being a Trojan. You never forget your your um, your buddies, and no matter what happens in your life, you always remember the guys you played with. Mm -hmm. What was the food like over there? Was that an experience for you folks? Well, even though I lost a lot of weight, uh, when we went to the army bases in Korea and in Okinawa, the breakfast, and, I mean, uh, it was so hot we were drinking soda for breakfast. But in Tokyo, we ate Kobe beef. Um, oh, Bobby Gerst was my teammate. He became an attorney later on. But we, we would eat pretty good. We ate good in Tokyo, but we didn't eat that good in Korea. <laughs> what did Rod have to say after the whole trip was over? Was he well, he said we put USC baseball on the international map. One, one of the uh, nice things was he was very close to um, um, Sesu Hayakawa, the famous Japanese actor, and um, I became very good friends with his daughter, Reiko Hayakawa. And uh, I will tell you one funny story, Ken. We're at a place called the Hapo Inn in Tokyo, and beautiful waterfalls, multicolored waterfalls. And I asked uh, Mr. Hayakawa permission to walk Reiko down to the waterfalls. And he said, no problem. So we were down there, and she was a very attractive girl. She had studied in Paris. She was a singer. And I said, Reiko, I want to kiss you. And she said, Vic, in Japan, boy kiss girl, they become engaged. <laughs> and I said, Reiko, I'm not going to kiss you. And uh, we, we communicated after that. We, we wrote letters, and um, it, was, it was just part of the, the whole thing about going to, it was just a fantastic trip. Thank you, Vic. I think um, every Trojan is proud of the, the job you folks did over there and the honor and reputation that you brought back to USC. And uh, before we quit, is there anything that you'd like to tell some of the younger people that might be watching this video in the years to come and as far as what, uh, what you would recommend as far as coming to USC or going in to play ball or just doing your best? Well, we, we had a golf tournament a couple of years ago. And if you remember, uh, Ken, we had uh, that young Asian lady came over. Yes. And she did a story about us, and, and she quoted me. And this, this quote went all over the world. Once you're a Trojan, you're a Trojan for life. And I've helped kids come to SC uh, scholarship-wise for baseball. And I tell them the difference between going to SC and 
any other school is the fact that you never forget the guys you played with and the kids you went to school and you're a Trojan for life. And I guess that this would sum it up. I went to homecoming with my daughter and I was outside of Heritage Hall and the band came out and started playing Fight On. And I got tears in my eyes. And my daughter said to me, Dad, you really loved it here, didn't you? I said, honey, outside of my family, this was the best four and a half years of my life. Thank you, Vic, and thank you, 1955 Trojan baseball team and fight on.